Hope everybody's doing well tonight. Welcome to my video on how to bring polygon models into SketchUp. Now I'm going to show you um, a free way of doing it. It's not the best way of doing it, um, but I'm also gonna show you what I think is the best way of bringing it into SketchUp. So the first part, um, you will have to download Blender, except if you don't know how to use Blender, that's completely fine. Um, we're not gonna be doing anything really that advanced. Um, you know, maybe a couple of key clicks um, just to scale up the, uh, the object, and then we just export it uh, as a colada. The second thing I'm gonna show you is the one you have to pay for, and that is Transmuter. Now, I got Transmuter a while back, and I have to say that um, I really don't regret getting it. Um, you can do a lot of things with it that really help out with SketchUp. Um, if you use things like Enscape or um, V-Ray, I believe, it can actually make proxies for you so that when you go to render, um, with those softwares through SketchUp, uh, all the materials are applied. Now, I don't use either of those render engines, so I could be wrong about that, but it is a pretty cool um, add-on. So we're gonna just take a look at it and we'll just see what it can do for you with polygon models. Now, uh, for this tutorial, I'm just gonna use the Chair Magna Replica. Um, it's a fairly simple chair, nothing too special about it. Uh, this one is a paid one. Uh, I just thought it was a good example, so I'm gonna use that. Uh, I already have it downloaded. Uh, I have SketchUp, well now I have SketchUp open, and I have Blender open. Now, um, for the Blender parts, I will try to have um, the least amount of buttons hit, just because as I said, I know um, a lot of people may not be using Blender, and you know, this is a SketchUp tutorial, so. Um, what we're going to do though, is we're going to import uh, an FBX file of that chair. So, I saved it on my desktop. Um, if we go to generic, find the FBX, um, there we go. Now, um, if, you hit, if you hold Z and go into material preview, then as you will see, there is no material applied to this. Uh, but we can fix that because we can click on the chair and then you should see all these options pop up over here. So if you click the material properties and you hit new, and then you click on this yellow dot here. So this is gonna give you the options of um, what kind of texture it is. So for this, you wanna get an image texture. And then you just go to open and you find your color, um, you find your uh, color map. So uh, chair, generic. Um, this one, you can use a color map for right out of the generic folder. Typically what I recommend you do is if you're downloading um, for Lumion or Blender, obviously um, when it comes to the Polygon download, you should always get the um, you should always get the Blender one. And the reason being, so I'll just pull this up quickly. Um, if you actually go in to this chair uh, Magna Replica, if you click on this, the color map. Now in this one, the color map is correct uh, because there's no metal on it. Typically. Um, if you're looking at something that is metal, you'll have like some black, anything that's basically supposed to be metal is just black, just because um, with 3ds Max, it works a little differently with maps um, than Lumion or Blender. So the, um, but then if you actually go into software Blender, then the correct color map will be there. So for this one, we can just use either one. It doesn't matter, but that is something to keep in mind. Now, uh, once we ha uh, have this here, just click on it once. So it's selected and it already was, but just make sure that it is. Hit S and then just type in 100 on your number pad. Now, what we just did is we made it 100 times bigger. Um, you know, the way that, um, the way that Colada's work uh, in SketchUp is sometimes the thought, like sometimes it, it can't get the geometry right on the first go. So it'll just have holes in the model. However, this works almost universally for SketchUp is that SketchUp has a much easier time making faces for things that are big um, because it has kind of like more room to work with. So if you're ever having trouble with like something like pipes or anything like that and like it keeps making all these um, open faces, then just make it bigger, like make it like 100 times bigger, do the modification and then scale it down with 0 0.01 and it just goes back to the normal size except all the faces will be intact. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here. So. Once we get to that point, we can go to File, um, and then we want to export a Colada. So I'm gonna save this right to my desktop. I'll just delete the chair because I already had that. Now, before I hit Export, what I wanna do is you wanna go up to the geometry here and uh, click Triangulate. Now, even though SketchUp typically uses triangles, um, 
for some reason the colada does not seem to like doing the triangles um if you uh basically export it without triangulate on it comes in virtually the exact same as how the wireframe would look in blender now you can export it right here but i just do want to show that quickly so this is the wireframe mode so if we just kind of keep that in mind um, and then we will export it now. We'll, we'll uh, get to see what it looks like uh, inside of uh, SketchUp. So I'll call this one chair. Uh, make sure that that is off, main, and okay. So I'll export that. And now uh, with SketchUp, we'll just come in here and we'll import this Colada. So go chair. So right now, keep in mind, we do have to scale it down because um, the distance from each leg right now is about 136 feet, which is obviously way too big. Um, so we just grab a corner and we type in 0 0.01. Then now, this is what we are left with. And as you can see, all these lines that came in, that is virtually the exact same as um, it was in Blender. I think it is actually the same. I don't know if there are some small differences, but uh, all we have to do from here though, is um, these are separated. So you can, if you basically tap on this a bunch of times, so you tap uh, once for the face, tap twice for like the triangle thing here, and then you just click them all. And then uh, it just comes in like that. Um, so as you can see, SketchUp does do the uh, it still does make the triangles because it has to deal with that. But the, the Colada itself didn't actually have the triangles, if it kind of, that kind of makes sense. Uh, so it just comes in a lot cleaner. Like if I click off it, as you can see, all these lines are um, how it's supposed to look in Blender. Um, and I find that it, these lines actually keep the mesh um, like working normally. Um, so yeah, if we just double tap on that a bunch of times, we have everything selected. Uh, I normally like just go to like soften and smooth edges now. For whatever reason, it won't soften all the edges. Like if you come in here and you click on one of these edges here, and you can only click at one at a time. I don't know if there's a way around that. Uh, if you do know a way around it, I'd love it if you put a comment and told me how, because I did actually try and play with this and couldn't get it. Um, so if you just hit soften, then these lines can go away. And while it's kind of tedious, if you really wanted to uh, get rid of those lines, you could. Um, and yeah, so that's, um, that's kind of one way of doing this. It's... Uh, you know, there, there are, um, I'm sure it'll kind of run into some issues when you start doing more complex models, but you know, for the most part, this is pretty good. Like you get some, uh, some issues up here. Like the reason why that looks weird is that it's taking the texture from the leg. So it's by no means perfect, but I think it's definitely good enough considering that this is the free way of doing it. Um, but now I want to show you why I think transmuter is so good for this. Um, because there are actually some advantages uh, of using it. So for this, I will just delete that for now. Uh, we can close Blender because we're all done with that. Um, and I will open Transmuter. So I'm going to go back to my desktop here. I'm going to grab the chair. And the generic one will work for this. We'll grab uh, the first one here should be FBX. So we'll drop that in. Uh, on the up axis, we'll put that to Y. And then I normally like to scale it down to like 60, I think. so Because that looks, you know, there's a human right there. So you can kind of get a better idea of how big the chair is. Maybe even 50, uh, 55, just kind of picky stuff. But um, what you want to do then goes to materials. Uh, we're going to find the color map again. And again, for this one, it doesn't matter. You can use the generic or the software folder. Uh, typically, I would recommend you use the software one, though. So as you can see, the texture is now on there, no problem. Uh, we'll go to transmute desktop, and we'll save this. Uh, as chair Meg the replica. Now, the format that this does get saved in is a SketchUp file. However, I don't recommend you actually open that SketchUp file because it does seem to have like some weird, um, like I guess like clipping ranges and stuff like that. Like I, I think it's better just to uh, take that SketchUp file and then import it, which that may even just be what the purpose of it is. But uh, if we come here, we click uh, SketchUp and we go to chair. This may just take a second. Uh, where are we? So we're over here and we'll drop that. Uh, we'll just check the size. So we need something, yeah, so about two feet difference. That's pretty good. 
Um, now, as you can see, though, right off the bat is that all those lines that we had before are gone. And what's kind of cool about this is that it softens all of the edges. Um, so it separates it based on the material, um, I believe. Uh, that's what it seems to do, at least. And so um, if you're doing something like, you know, um, bringing in something with metal, you could just change that one metal and then still take that uh, color map or um, the, the color map still apply, bring that into Lumion, and then you can just change the parts of it that you want. Um, it gives you a little more control. And especially if you were setting a scene up um, just inside a SketchUp, maybe you weren't using a render engine, it was just a SketchUp scene, then Transmuter is just really, really powerful for that. Um, one more thing I want to show you with this is that um, if we open up Transmuter again and go to the geometry, so we can see the edges here. And uh, yeah, so looking at the edges here, there are 20,000 triangles. So that's, you know, that is actually a fair bit of triangles for just a single chair in SketchUp. Um, it lets you actually do mesh, mesh simplification. So um, this is very similar to the um, decimate tool inside of Blender. Uh, and it, uh, you know, if you keep it up around like the 75%, normally I find that that's actually pretty good. Like you won't get any like open faces from that. So let's, uh, let's transmute that again. And we'll call this replica chair 11, just so we can compare them. So let's import that one as well. And this will just take a second, but not as long as the last one. So as you can see, we do have a couple of like extra lines. Um, yeah, you might get like a couple of weird little faces like that, but for the most part, it's pretty good. And like, um, you can just see the difference. Oops. You can just see the difference in the two. Like when I click on this, you can see all these here. Uh, let's actually go to hidden geometry. Let's turn that on. So you, yeah, you can see the difference of um, how much uh, like this one's simplified. So it won't uh, take up as much room in your scene. Like this one, uh, I think this chair on the right here has like one sixth of the triangles that the one on the left does. Um, except when you turn off the hidden geometry, they're virtually the same. Uh, there are uh, some slight differences. It seems like like you kind of lose like this seam here, but. That one actually kind of looks worse in some ways because it looks like it's kind of getting through with the shadow, but you got you got to get the point. So those are the two ways that um, you can bring uh, polygon models into SketchUp. Um, as I said, the, the Blender way of doing it is free, but it's definitely not as good as the Transmuter one. So if this is something that you think you're going to use a lot, um, then I recommend getting a free trial of the uh, Transmuter add-on. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it below. Uh, I do believe that there is a free one, so I'll have to double check that. But um, yeah, regardless, I, if you are thinking about buying the add-on, I think it's definitely worth it. So um, I'll leave that one here, though, guys, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Have a great day.